name is Carmen Brazil. I'm here in my studio with my dear friend BT, who uh, is fashionably late. <laughs> That's Which being is very okay. politically correct. When you're good friends and your family, <laughs> things like this don't matter. Mm -hmm. And so we're here to spend some time with each other and talk about your music, your history, and what was the music that helped you start all this? What really sparked my love of music more than anything is, is classical music. Listening to my mom listen to Brahms and Beethoven and Mozart and just loving it, man, and picking out melodies on my little toy piano when I was a kid and stuff. Can you name a few of the artists that you work with and can you name some of the ones that you're the most proud of? I've been fortunate to work with so many different cool artists from The Roots to Sting to Tori Amos, Justin Timberlake, so many different sorts of artists. My real proud moment working with Peter Gabriel is because he's such a hero of mine and was so welcoming and asking, what do you think of this bass line? And you're like, dude, I was sitting fourth row center listening to you belt out Red Rain when I was 14. Like, are you asking what do you mean me? what do I mean if you think of your bass lines? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Those are real proud moments for me. Working with Sting was amazing too because he's such a cool, charismatic, charming guy, you forget yeah. it's Sting, and then he picks up an instrument, and you're like, holy shit, it's Sting. It's one of my subversive pleasures, is working with people that I loved when I was a kid. Can you name a song as a child that just sticks out? For sure, I mean, as, a, as an artist or a group, for me, it's Depeche Mode. I have so much visceral, you know. As an adult or as a child? As a, as a kid. As a kid. Information attached to that music that's inseparable. So that brings you back somehow. Oh my God. Growing dude. up. Oh, it, I can hear the crickets in Maryland. Ali with frickin' combat boots and eyeliner and a bad mohawk that I gave him and us sneaking out and going to the graveyard and. All that instantly takes right. me back takes to back. that. Yeah, Construction Time Again, Broken Frame, Speak and Spell, those first couple Depeche Mode albums, it completely sonifies for me my teenage years. There's yeah. a lot of things in between along the way. New Order plugs me into a lot of that stuff from being mm. a kid. Because where I grew up in rural Maryland, you couldn't find yeah. New Order records or Depeche Mode records. You really had to work to get that stuff. I'd have to order them and you know we'd skateboard or ride our BMX bikes to the shop when yeah, they came. That's how you find it, yeah. Yeah, we were so excited. The thing that gets me yeah. here is that I got to experience something that kids aren't experiencing now. Yeah. I got to experience the joy of waking up in the morning yeah. and being like, holy crap, my record came in today. And to go and pick up a vinyl copy of The, the Soul Mining and to read sure. every single thing on the liner notes about who or worked on that record. Or waiting to hear a song on the radio. Like oh. you heard a song oh, yeah. last night and you don't know when it's gonna be played and they're gonna say, we're gonna play this new artist song tomorrow at this time and you're waiting to hear it. Now, within seconds, you have, you it, have it, it, which is something. Yeah. There's no ritual to yeah. it. Can you name some times of your life that are related to music that kind of stand out? Like the first time you got laid or the first time <laughs> you rode your bike? You know, I, I can. And the got laid one is actually a good place to start. When I scored Monster, we licensed the Journey track. And the same song. I got to meet Steve Perry and then we were working on something. And I said, I made out with the first girl I ever made out with in my entire life listening to you sing. Like, that's just think, weird. Yeah. Musical guilty pleasure? Yeah, there are a couple, actually. I'm sure you have some, too, you know, that are just like the uh, girl you would never tell your friends you went out with. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like muscle rock. <laughs> You know, <laughs> totally. like, mine's not as hip as yours, though. Okay, I well, dude, you. I told you Journey, come on. <laughs> what you... Well, mine's, mine's a lot worse than yours, <laughs> even though I like Journey, because they were from the Bay Area, which is where I was from. Right on. So it was a big deal there. But for but me, I'm, I'm curious, man. Well, my mother was a piano teacher and a music major, so we oh, were, I was cool. always around music. Um, you listen to music in all kinds of places, you know, mediums. Is there any favorites? Mm -hmm. For me, I really, really enjoy listening to music. I'm not gonna give you a location, I'm gonna give you right. kind of like a aesthetic event mm -hmm. coming out of speakers. As opposed to headphones. Yeah, I like to listen to what's happening in a place as opposed to walking around with music playing. Because I find that when I'm walking right. the streets in some exotic foreign right. place, that's where music starts coming to me. That's so, my spot. How about you? I wanna hear where your place is. 
I travel an awful lot, you know, like you. And so, of course, you're on an airplane, you're listening in headphones. But something with the altitude, man, I'm like an old lady. Sometimes I start crying. I try not to listen to music on planes if I can help it. We're kind of the sort of poster child for that of making music on airplanes and hotel rooms. And, for and, sure, dude. Know. I mean, literally, this binary yeah. universe, I finish probably 60% of that on planes. Have you thought about when you die, what music you want to be played at, um, at your funeral? I have thought about have it, to, actually. Yeah. Would you want something to be more calm in the sense of music or something more like that some, journey song? Yeah, no, I don't want somebody DJing. Would you want, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, there's some pieces of music of other composers like like Debussy and like Rachmaninoff and some pieces of music of mine, like Satellite, The Spiner Universe, my monster score, and they are me. That's great. And describe me better than even music that I love. You're stuck on Desert Island. What three artists or albums or a combination of would you have? I actually could live without recorded music. That's really funny that you say that because I and I've never, agree with that. I've never said this before. Yeah. I've never thought it, but I have such a plethora of music in my head associated with all this feeling and, and memories that I could remember those songs and be okay without the recordings of them. But if you had to pick three. If I had to pick three, um, I, would, I would definitely pick something by Depeche Mode. So it's a hard one because their whole catalog has so, so much. greatest hits. Me, me, yeah, that's kind of cheating, I and know. I want to cheat, but <laughs> I would, I would probably, I would probably pick Broken Frame just because I associate kind of mm -hmm. falling in love with that band, sure. with that album, and I have to kind of cheat on this one, but I, I would have to have a recording of the Sunken Cathedral by WC, or just have to, and I can't imagine living without hearing for the rest of my life is the Wall. So, Carmen, tell us what your three would be. I would pick some piano-based music, i.e. Harold Budd or Eric Satie or something, because that's very soothing to me. I would think I would pick something very ethnic, like just Van Gasparian or a Sarangi, some Indian, like, you know, Murad oh, Ali. Such a beautiful yeah, instrument, Yeah, like these instruments it? that just make mountains move. Yeah. And I could list records, but I would just, I w it wouldn't matter to me. It would just be that sound. And then I might pick something almost a little cheesy, like a Beatles, any Beatles record that would bring me back. First of all, thank you for being late. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that would come Coming up again. Up. <laughs> no, I know you're busy. You're busier than I am. You're busier than a lot of people. And thank you from the bottom of my heart to, to come here to oh, share these great stories. Thank you for having stories. me. You're a great inspiration to all of us and a great artist. And you know, best of luck in the future. Thank you so much, Carmen. Cool, man.